Hi, I'm Dan Ratner, and this is my story. In 2003, I felt a twinge in my back when I was tying my shoes. I was 28 years old, and I had heard the various stories. Back pain, degenerative discs, sudden injuries that never healed, and more. You know this story, too, because it is one of the modern-day horror stories people can't help but tell. The fateful words crossed my mind. What if... What I know now is that once we begin to ask questions that are in fact rooted in fear, we begin to build a case against ourselves and can open the door to a world of suffering. Not only that, but very few people in the world understand what happens from that point forward or how to help someone once these thought processes have begun. That twinge of pain turned into increasing pain and a swirl of questions that only mounted. The pain began to make me far less mobile. The pain made me stop doing what I was doing. I had even heard this many times. If it hurts when you do it, stop doing it. So I did. And eventually I stopped doing virtually anything physical. I began to have terrible, wrenching spasms hundreds of times a day. I would spasm in the middle of the night, waking me up from sleep. I would spasm when I got out of a chair if I had been sitting there for more than a few minutes. I would spasm from shivering if I got cold in the winter. I would spasm if I got bumped the wrong way. The spasms left my muscles feeling as if they had been torn to shreds. They were, to this day, the most excruciating pain I had ever even imagined, let alone suffered personally. I hurt every moment of every day, and this lasted for eight years. There was no break whatsoever, other than some pain relief from taking increasing amounts of Advil, which could have been detrimental to my internal organs after enough time. During this time, it became apparent that there was little help for me. Medicine, fairly uniformly, seemed to have the view that I would likely have this problem for the rest of my life. The main problem with that? This was no longer a life that I felt was very worth living. I looked around and saw people able to do all kinds of things I could not. I saw people scratching their heads, wondering what was wrong with me, but not really empathizing, and certainly not joining me to try to figure it out with me. No one helped. No one. I began to feel more and more jaded about society. Nothing has ever felt quite so cold, and I could not see any real meaning in life anymore. As I kept trying to get some relief, I found alarmingly that more and more areas of society were proving to be of absolutely no use. I got an MRI, and minor findings didn't shed any real light on things. The funny thing is, like many of you, I wanted a diagnosis. No matter how bad it might have been, unless it was cancer or some other life-threatening illness, I wanted to know. Physical therapy had no answers either. They all looked so puzzled, and I kept thinking, how can you be so puzzled about the very thing you do for a living? Eventually, I gave up on traditional routes and tried to just go on living my life. While I had to give up basketball during this time, far too dangerous as I saw it, I got back to playing tennis and squash. Anything that was largely non-contact, I figured I wasn't doing much further damage. But the pain was mind-numbing and soul-crushing. After about two years of this so-called living, I heard a colleague at work talk about back pain in the past tense. I was on the edge of my seat. What did she do? What did she mean? She told me she had been to a chiropractor. I knew many people did this, so I figured I might as well. The chiropractor I saw did, in fact, give me hope. He truly cared. He was kind. He was interested in solving the mystery with me. And he was hopeful. I never understood during this time why what he was doing was helping. At first, in fact, things got worse. His chiropractic adjustments sent the spasms into a gear formerly not known to me. But he said it would get better with loosening up the seeming brick that was my lower back and calming the spasming muscle I came to call the eel muscle that would writhe around like I was being shocked with a cattle prod multiple times a day. But over time, his calm and caring demeanor helped me through, and I started to see results of some sort. The pain was reduced by about 40% or so. After a year of going to him, to my surprise and intense relief, the spasms began to stop. I slept through a night without spasm for the first time. And this is how we begin to have hope, by having some measure of success, because the proof is in the pudding. Eventually, using stretches multiple times a day, 
massaging my lower back with my own hands, and even beginning to do push-ups again. I felt like I had just crawled out of a refugee camp the first time, was unable to do even one, and felt truly sick from the effort for the first several weeks. I got better enough to get off of the Advil. Again, to my surprise, I was able to reduce the dose, and then I would seem to normalize back to the same level of pain with less medication. I was very relieved, but I still felt completely alone, had no idea what had been going on for me or why, and was clinging to theories and ideas that I knew did not explain things well. That is when the chiropractor tentatively brought up Dr. Sarno. He said that Dr. Sarno had helped some people with the information in his books, but that I shouldn't take it too, too far. I was very skeptical, but as I always said, I would have drunk a bucket of sand to feel better. Still, I let the book sit on my shelf for nearly a year before giving it a go. But the minute I began to read, I found I was getting the right information. New information. I could not believe my eyes, because it was so simple, so clear, and so shocking that no one I knew mentioned this or even knew about it at all. Just by knowing that these physical changes that had happened to me were entirely real, but caused by changes in my thoughts and feelings, I knew I was on to something. This had happened at such a young age, and conspicuously at an age one year younger than my father was when he died, and the same age my mother was during that same event. Sarno even described the mechanism in the body that allowed for this, something upon which I have expanded to make more sense of, as I felt more work was needed to understand it fully. To make a long story short, I began to use Dr. Sarno's information as the basis for my recovery in full. After about two months of reading him, and thinking about it, and three days after reading his latest book, The Divided Mind, I was doing flips in the pool. My back was loose and free. I was tentatively losing my fear and gaining in hope. I did not dare to tell anyone fully what was going on, because I had found them all so unhelpful, so unempathic, so focused on themselves and how they might understand my experience, and finding they only added to my confusion. But I began to look at the science. There were, apparently, all sorts of research studies that backed up Dr. Sarno, and none that backed up what the doctors had been saying. Herniated discs, for example, do not have any correlation with back pain. This was just the beginning of the opening of my real life. I would go on to use the science I had learned, and then to apply my own logic across the board to get all of my questions answered. The world was beginning to make sense in ways it never had. I even found that my pain was not at all random. It related to my emotional trauma, my fears and doubts, which were based on a lack of safety in the world based on numerous experiences, and my lack of a sense of power in my own life. I was not living my life the way I knew I needed to. I was not aligned with me, and my body knew it. I was able to become more certain about all kinds of things, including my own perceptions and ability to see things clearly, even when so many others were saying completely the opposite and I learned to become the most powerful force in my own life. This entire journey, in fact, taught me to feel that life does have meaning, that everything does happen for a reason, that life makes sense, that I make sense, and that my body is the wisest, most empathic entity I have at my side. It helped me truly love and respect me, want the best for myself, and believe in myself at a level I could never have imagined. Not only did my body heal, but so did my mind, my soul, and my spirit. Since that time, I have had no chronic symptoms whatsoever. It's been over 11 years. I have come to feel as complete a mastery over mind-body experience as I could possibly imagine. I have come to see my purpose in my life and to unleash it on the world. I now have alleviated crippling, horrific symptoms for thousands of people. I have created a show and podcast to share what I know and the system I created that organizes the mind-body experience and allows the sufferer to master the symptoms and know what to do in their day-to-day -day living to address these issues. I have teaching seminars that help people get all of the information they need so they don't have to be lost in a sea of disinformation or conflicting and confusing information. I have begun to train other clinicians in my three-column system that helps people simplify and understand their emotional lives 
crush all doubts with science and logic, and set up an internal system designed to help each person feel powerful and capable of living their best lives. I look forward to bringing this same journey and growth to each and every one of you. It doesn't even take that long. With the right information, organization, and logic, you will see that what you've been experiencing makes sense, and so do you. You're going to love what you find out because, as I like to say to everyone I work with, including myself, you are gold.